Welcome, in this video we're going to look at how I use Obsidian to track stuff for work, specifically with GitHub and with some of our documentation. If you want to support the channel because you like these types of videos, you can become a member at curtismichael.ca slash membership or take a course curtismichael.ca slash education. Also, all my courses are on Skillshare. Find links to those below. Buckle up, let's dive in. So there are a few areas, some not all of them I can show you. Um, so something, say, with customers. So there are... Uh, there's a special note for a customer called Colma and a special note for customers we take payments for with links to some of the important documentation around that for them. So if there's a special note, and I manage just over 80 US city sites, if there's a special note in there that I need to make for uh, a client, then I would make it in here so that I know and so that other ultimately other future developers know about this. Those are That's the important part. Next thing we do, as you can see right here, uh, I take or keep track of valid SH files. Um, is one of them. So this is my GitHub ticket. So this would actually correspond to 2065, a GitHub issue. Uh, and this is actually public, so anyone can go see this if they really want to. And it was just validating.sh file. So as we deploy things, um, we have a command structure and it lets us run this sh file to do things on our servers. So say updated database value, stuff like that. And I wanted to validate it and I did some looking. And so what this really is, is a documentation of what I did, what didn't work, um, what did work and where we ended up so that a future developer can come back and see that, right? So another one with menu freezing, this is an ongoing one. Uh, I need to keep better documentation on it, but I linked to some Slack conversations uh, in here and just kind of document some of the things we have done. Here's another one, plugin files deleting randomly. So you can see here that I have a lot more notes on it and links to different conversations. And what really ended up happening as we went through all of this is that we... Uh, sometimes our GitHub repositories weren't available, and so they uh, just disappeared. And so when they tried to clone them or get them onto our servers, they said, hey, they're not there, and they just failed and blindly failed. So we had to redo some of our infrastructure to make sure that that didn't happen. And this is a record of all of my research. So that's probably the, one of the big things that I use it for, right? You can see I have upgrading PHP 8, calendar index. So not every ticket gets in here, but any ticket that requires some research, some deeper thought. Um, so I can dig into it and check things. And so that future developers have more notes on what actually happened, why we did things a certain way. That's one of the big ones we use. Next up is Proud City Developers. So that would be stuff like our PC cube command. So PC cube delete being one of them. So this lets me run um, a forced deletion of our pod. So this is some of the infrastructure and PC cube is aliases to Kubernetes commands for us. And so we continue to document them here so that we have them, right? Uh, PC cube, app create, app delete, delete evicted, all these things that we use regularly so that we can come in here and see the commands and know what we need to do. So a future developer when they come in here can see these things and know what these commands do. They're not all documented at the moment because I'm the one who's really started this documentation well and continue to keep it up to date, but we have some of them in there. We also have other things in here like, oh, our release notes. So that's one of our release notes right here. And so as I close a ticket, I actually come in here and start to list them in here usually. Um, we're behind on this one because we've had some emergencies. So this should have gone out a few, last week actually. Um, I got one ticket, but I'll have to actually go back here. And usually I would keep these up to date as I go. So I just write a little blurb about them as we go. And I keep the plugins that we've updated as well so that we can put that out with our release notes as well. Uh, another thing we'll do is say technology, like how do we add replicas, how do we deal with certificates, how do you deal with Composer. So this is again more documentation for us so that we know what we need to do, right? Any notes on our WordPress plugins specifically, right? Auth0, post expiration, our quick menu plugin, WP Rocket, just the things we've learned in these so that a future developer doesn't have to start from scratch like I did because there was a lot of stuff not documented. That's most of what we do. So we use it for release notes uh, as I'm going. I use it to keep track of any GitHub issues that need to um, have more research in them, have more links in them, right? So I'll you know write, if I'm not done something, I'll write down at the end of the day, like, where was I? And I'll put a date in there so that I know where I was. And I'll even say, keep the relevant tabs in the browser so that if I can't pick it up for some reason, someone else has to pick it up later, they can go to the exact browser tabs I was at and they know, you know my current train of thought at that moment and they can continue on or they can decide I was an idiot and choose something else. But so that I know as well, because past Curtis is always way smarter than Curtis at the present. And I have no idea what I was doing like two weeks ago because there's been so many things coming through all the time as it is with many software projects. And that is how I use GitHub, I, or that's how I use Obsidian. We sync it through GitHub as well, which I've done a video on before. So I will link to that uh, as well. Have an awesome day.